Live for USCFSales.com, I'm Steve Lopez with another Fritz 13 tip for you. We've been looking in the last video, the one immediately previous to this one, we looked at using your chess engine to analyze positions that people have submitted to the Let's Check server. In other words, how to help out the worldwide community of fellow Fritz 13 users by analyzing positions that they would like to have analyzed by other people's chess engines. When you analyze positions, for every position that you analyze, you receive a credit. Well, how do you spend these credits? Well, we're going to show you that in this video. We're going to show you how to submit your own position to the worldwide community of Fritz 13 users for them to analyze for you in return. Quid pro quo. Analyze a position for someone else, get a credit, and then spend that credit to have one of your positions that you're curious about analyzed. On the board, I have a game that I played a long time ago. This goes back nearly, I guess it's been almost 17 years now. Uh, but I remember this game really, really well. And there's a little backstory to it. I'll tell it real quick, which is I used to run chess tournaments. And uh, that particular February, on the 11th day of February, I was sick as a dog. Um, I had a head cold flu thing going on. It was just raging. And I was praying. Of course, I had to show up and run this tournament. I was committed to it. And I showed up to run the tournament, and everybody got a look at me and said, Man, you look like you're dying. You know, if you want to cancel the tournament, just cancel it. We'll all go home. And some of these guys had driven some distance. And I went, No, no, I'll, you know, I'll hang in. I'll, I'll get through it. Uh, one of the guys who did drive some distance was my friend Floyd Boudreau, who's a master level player. And I was praying that we would have an even number of players for this tournament. And, of course, we had an odd number, which meant that I had to play or somebody would have to take a bye. So I went ahead and seated myself into the tournament and had to play Floyd in the first round. Now, Floyd's a master-level player. I am not. He was several hundred points higher than me on the you know, ELO ratings. Uh, he should have crushed me like a bug, and it didn't work out that way. Um, I lost the game, but it wasn't a total slaughter. And the wild part was he's a much, much better player than me. And I was really, really sick, and I still played a decent game. So this is a game I'm, I'm kind of proud of, actually. It's the best game I ever lost. But there are places in the game which I highlighted. Uh, one of them is uh, after White's 12th move, and the other two you see in green. There are places in the game where I kind of question you know, what I played, and I'm interested in seeing what some other people think of these points in the game. So we'll start by submitting the position. After Floyd's played queen d3, you'll see in the notation I played a5, which can't be good. Um, the c3 knight can drop into b5, and it doesn't quite have an outpost there. I mean, I can still advance the c-pawn. But, you know, if I'm going to advance the queen side pawns, probably now was not the time. I should have waited and, and maybe pushed a rook um, over to e8 or the queen to e7 or something. There's a bunch of things I could have done. So I'm interested in seeing what computers think about this position. So this is the position I have selected to submit to the worldwide community for analysis. And since I've been doing the bit, my own part, where I'm sending my own engine out there to analyze other people's positions, I've racked up a lot of credits. I have over 200 credits at this point. So I can spare one to have this position analyzed. So the first thing you want to do, and we're going to look at some still pictures. For technical reasons, it's very hard for me to narrate a live video where I'm showing you online, you know, while I'm online, how to do these things. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is this, is this is where we start. The first thing you want to do, once you have your game loaded, your position highlighted, as I have here, the next thing you do is you go to the Engine menu and you select the Let's Check button, and that connects you to the Let's Check server, uh, very simply. Um, you'll notice that before you click that button, I've not done it yet, you have buttons like Contribute Engine and Submit Position that are in half tone. They're not available to you until you connect. Also, Use Live Book is another one. You can't do these things until you've connected. So the way you connect is click Let's Check. And once you've done that, now you have various commands that have become available to you. One of them is highlighted here, the, the little orange button that says Submit Position, and you'll see the mouse over says Submit Current Board for Analysis by Other Engines. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Notice that as soon as you click Let's Check, of course, your own engine, in this case Deep Fritz 8, already begins to analyze. You'll see that I'm already uh, on the 12th ply uh, just in that short of time. 
But I'm going to submit this position after White's 12th move to have it analyzed. Now I'm going to show you about a two minute clip here for the next two minutes, uh, and you'll be grateful for this. It's going to be silent. You won't hear me talking. But I'll tell you before we begin, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and submit this position. I'm going to click the live book tab here, and you're going to see the live book. The notation is going to be replaced by the live book display. There'll be a note. It'll be hard to read on the video, but what it'll say is it, there'll be a little notation that's, that will give me my current credits, what I have left after I've submitted this position. And there'll be a little note that says it's going to take one to six minutes to have that position analyzed and receive analysis in return. I just want to tell you that's what it will say, but it will be a little hard to read in the video. Uh, you'll be amazed at how fast this comes back. Uh, it actually was supposed to take one to six minutes according to the little note that you get. It took less than a minute. Then once it's back, once I've received that analysis, I want to save it into the game. So I go to the file menu and select replace game to make sure that I save what I got back from the other users who have analyzed the position. So you'll see that in the video as well. We've got a little clip here It's going to run about two minutes, and then when it's done, we'll come back and talk about what we got as far as the results. See, I wasn't kidding. That happened pretty dang fast. I expected to wait two, five, six minutes, you know. And within a minute, I got the analysis back. Pow, there it is. Now, to interpret the results, what we see here is we see a little short variation. Apparently, there are a lot of options after 13 bishop g5. What this user, who's using Houdini 1.5, uh, which is a freebie version of that particular piece of software, um, what this user's engine thought was after a 21 ply search, after looking 21 plies deep, 21 half moves deeply into the position, basically thought I should have played d6, that Floyd should have replied bishop g5, and then after that apparently there are several good moves uh, where Houdini had problem picking out the best one. There may be two, maybe three moves that are so close together in evaluation it did not provide a 13th move for black. But this particular engine thought that after d6, instead of a5, which is what I actually played, if I had played d6 and Floyd had uh, thrown that bishop out there, Trompovsky style, to uh, uh, g5, that I would have been down by about 15 hundredths of a pawn. That's what this negative, I'm sorry, I would have been up. Sorry, I lied. Um, it's from White's viewpoint. So I would have been ahead at that point as black by 15 hundredths of a pawn. So, but that's so that's such a, a close shave that it's essentially an even game still at that point. We're barely out of the opening here, so that's what this particular engine, run by a fellow Fritz 13, let's check user, thought of this position. 
Uh, if you notice, by the way, if you go down here, what's cool about this, if you go down here and look at Deep Fritz 8, Deep Fritz 8 after a 12 ply search is saying Rook E8. Now, I would certainly let this go a fair bit deeper before I would make any kind of conclusion as to what Deep Fritz 8 was thinking. But we've already seen two different ideas here. Uh, Houdini doing a 21 ply search thinks D6. Deep Fritz 8, after doing a 12 ply search, thinks Rook E8. So we've already got two opinions. So that's the value of submitting your positions. There are people that have engines that you don't have uh, that can do the analysis for you and do it pretty dang quickly. I mean, that Houdini analysis, I don't have the username here, unfortunately, but that came back really fast. If you go back and look at this video again and watch that silent clip, I think it came back in about 20 seconds or so. It wasn't very long at all. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that unless you want to have to submit this position again and spend another credit to have the same position analyzed, which I do not. I mean, I spent a credit that I earned by having my engine analyze pe other people's positions. Um, I want to preserve this analysis. I don't want to have to spend another credit to have an engine analyze this again. And you saw that I did that. In that silent video clip, I went up and I did a replace game to save that particular piece of analysis into the game. If you ex if you go out and have a another user's engine analyze the position and you exit the game for whatever reason, you load another game, you exit for its 13, you're going to lose that analysis. So you need to do a replace game to make sure you save it if in fact you want to save it. Here's how you do it. You go to the file menu and you come down here to save and you get a little sub menu that opens up off to the right here and there's replace and if you click replace of course it says replace the game in the database with this version so anytime you make changes this is a real useful tip by the way anytime you make changes to a game in a database in Fritz 13 and this also applies to Fritz 12 by the way as well anytime you make a change to a game and you want to preserve those changes you don't want to lose them when you exit the program or load another game make sure you do this go to the file menu in Fritz 13 or the application menu in Fritz 12 which is that round button in the upper left corner that you'll remember go to either file or the application menu depending on your version of the software go to save and then when that sub menu pops up off to the right click replace when you do that, by the way, you'll get the header information. You'll get the names of the white and black player and all that stuff. Just click OK. You don't need to change the header unless you want to. Click OK, and your game will be saved, and you will preserve the analysis. For USCFSales.com, I'm Steve Lopez. Thank you very much for watching.